Welcome back to The Crazy Show. This is Coach Cameron, episode 558. You a soccer pay to play. It's a never-ending scam. I will prove it. I have solutions, though. We're going to have Taylor Twelman's epic rant. And uh, for the ones who haven't heard it, it's epic. Uh, it did nothing. Fell on deaf ears. And we're going to have those conversations. And Taylor Twelman, I'm coming for you. I want you on my show. I want to talk about your epic rant. And where, where are we? We are in the same freaking place we're at every day. In the COVID lockdown, this is episode 558. Welcome. It's not about tonight. It's not about Jurgen Klinsmann. It's not just about Bruce Arena. As a whole, U.S. soccer is not prepared. They have not done a good enough job of getting this group ready to play. And keep in mind, the last two Olympics, no United States. Those players that would be playing in the Olympics, 24 through 28, how many of them are in this roster? The players got to be good enough, too. So a lot of people on social media right now want to say it's Jurgen Klinsmann's fault. It's Bruce Arena's fault. It's Daniil Galati's fault. By the way, as an ex-player, every single one of those players, they can take some nightmares yep. for the rest of their lives because this is an utter embarrassment with the amount of money that is in Major League Soccer and in this sport. You can't get a draw, a tie against Trinidad? Max, you don't deserve to go to the World Cup. They, they so this this is one of uh, two things he brought up that was very important in his epic rant as we go through this. Uh, the first thing is nightmares for us or lives. I don't think so. I think some do, but majority don't because they're entitled. They're like, oh, I deserve to be on the national team. There is no one coming up. He mentions uh, behind them, press, pressuring them for it. I mean, it, there's just no passion behind it. Like, they don't they don't have to, like, they get kicked out of the World Cup um, because they can't beat Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, but they have other problems not defending home field. They're, they're not going to have nightmares. because uh, Why would they? They're not passionate enough. We, we don't have that. You think Bradley cares? I think he sleeps fine. I think he, he, he's totally fine. And by the way, I know I rip on Bradley a lot. Um... But it's uh, – I just don't respect his play. And it's not his fault. I don't know why I rip on him so much. I, I'm sure he's the nicest guy in the world. I've only heard – I mean, the reason he's a captain and all that because people love him in the locker room and stuff. So he serves a purpose. And obviously he's a good player according to the American standards. But he can't handle the ball under pressure. He can run forever. And I guess his heart rate stays low or whatever. Um, he, can, he can move the ball right to left very simply. And, but when there's pressure on, nope. He's going to lose it, um, but he's a good player. Okay. But that's not what we need. We can't, we can't, it's not his fault. It's the U.S. soccer's fault. We do not develop players. So most countries that are competing, um, the, the big, the, the ones that you have to beat to, to win the World Cup, the, the fraud, uh, France, Italy, Brazil, they have like two or three rosters of people they could put in. There's, they have a depth chart of three, four, five, six players behind them. In every position, minimum, and we don't have that. We don't have we don't have the talent pool. We don't. I mean, seriously, think about us. Our national team on the men's side. If we lost, if we lost two players, you imagine if we lost two starters, we'd be scrambling. That's a problem. That's a that's a that's a big problem. Um, we we can't compete at the world stage unless we have depth. But let's go on. They Plain certainly and did it. And people always say about it's tough to get points here, but I see Mexico oh, get come points. Come on. We can, we, we can stop using that excuse. Yes. This is, this is, you look at this team, you look at this, they're going to be sitting around next summer and they're going to be watching this World Cup go on without them. So what does this program do? Is this this group, do you, do you blow it up? Do you this just, is everything, though, Matt. So Because I remind everyone, 2,000 euros, Germany laid an egg. And they all came together. Bundesliga, second Bundesliga, DFB, the German uh, Football Federation, all came together with a 10-year plan. Guess what happened in 10 years? They won that World Cup. If this failure does not wake up, Everyone from U.S. soccer to Major League Soccer, from pay to play to broadcasters to everything, then we're all insane because the definition of insanity is doing the exact same thing, knowing the result. Love it. And if we. And, and that's where we're at. We're doing the exact same thing, knowing that we're going to get the same result. We're, we're, we're screwed. How are we not doing the same thing? 
We're doing exactly the same thing. We just changed the names. And I've said this from episode like five. I've been saying this from the very beginning. I've seen it time and time again. It's the same teams. It's the same coaches. It's the same organizations. They just keep changing the name. Why? Because it sells. They, they put something new and they, and, and they put a ribbon on it. Like, buy it. And they do because the parents change. Their kids age out. Families move on. And new New suckers come in. Well, I'm here to tell all the new suckers, listen to me first before you go join these clubs and they start to, oh, we have, we have a, uh, a fitness uh, coach uh, specialist and we have video breakdown and we have cameras on the field with eagle, eagle cameras to uh, film your child so the college coaches can see it if they're not there. And uh, uh, we go to showcase and all this crap. It sounds, it sounds amazing. That's, I used to say that crap because I know it sells and it sounds ex- exciting and stuff and whatever. It's a lie. I was part of the lie. At least I woke up and stopped doing that. It's so frustrating that it, we're doing the same thing. And nothing's changed. And this epic rant was what? Two years ago? Whatever. Don't change it. And I mean we, everyone in U.S. soccer... Then what are we doing? What's the point? Because that should have never happened with the billion dollars plus that is going into Major League Soccer and youth development. That should have never happened, and it did, and every single person should look themselves in the mirror. And by the way, that's including myself. Yeah, I'm part of we, U.S. Soccer. We're all involved. I, I played for the program. It's embarrassing. We're <laughs> all involved, and we're sick, and we look... And uh, we look at what this team has been able to do, and it, a lot of times they, the criticism comes and they repel the criticism. The re- criticism, it's going to come, come and think on. about it. I hear what up. you're saying now. It, the gloves are off at this point, and, we, and people got to be real. And well, let you and I it. have talked about this off camera. Well, guess what? I see that little red light. It's on, and yeah. I'm going to bring it up right now. Okay. The, criti- the gloves should have been off years ago. We should have been having real criticism. And the discussion after Brazil, Max, was can we beat the Colombias and the Belgians and the Argentinas of the world? Are you kidding me? We can't be Trinidad on a field that's too wet and too heavy. <laughs> what are we doing? This what are we doing? This is the discussion that's being had. It's it's remarkable to me when I go in this stupid thing right here at how ignorant people are when the rest of the world, Belgium played Bosnia on a cow pad. All right, I'm done. But that's the epic rant. And to Taylor's Twelman's, uh, you know, final th- thoughts what are we doing what are we doing the same thing over again and here's what's funny there is no discussion in chicago by the way where all the national team and u.s soccer headquarters is there is no discussion on um changing anything you know why it's because guys like this for the ones that are on YouTube, it's the national team coach. I don't even know. What is his name? Some weird name. Uh, Baby Blue. No, that was, uh, I don't know. Um, that's our national team coach. That's how much I think of him. I can't remember his name. Uh, he is right now on a whiteboard coming up with some crazy backline formation and connecting passes, studying film, how he can break it. I mean, he's, he's coming up with the ultimate plan. And I've been there. I did the same thing. I, I'm, I'm 19 years into college coaching. I've done it all. As far as like going through my head, using my, my licensing protocols and, and the proper sessions and, and film breakdown, all th- I've done it all. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It makes you feel good at moments. Only if you could have just stuck to my system long enough, we, we would have done it. You, you, need to, you should listen to your coach. It's not about these yahoos. You imagine they're, they're, in, they're in Chicago. That's where the national team staff has to be on the men's side. I don't know about the women's side. You want to be in Chicago right now? You know what would help? You know, you know what will help uh, U.S. soccer? This is what would help. If uh, the, uh, all the riots... Go and burning down things. Go burn down U.S. Soccer's headquarters. Just kidding. Don't do that. But if it somehow disappeared and they had to start from scratch, maybe, just maybe, they can rethink things. 
They have to rethink things. We, we, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Not, it's just frustrating. There, nothing has changed. DA is gone. Okay. Now, d- don't forget that MLS academies came into the DA and were thrown a fit from the very beginning. That is facts. That's factual information I'm giving you. MLS was complaining, the academies complaining about how they cannot drop from the top tier and they couldn't be relegated. That's how they roll. Teams would be, uh, there was a a team, and I I keep telling the same freaking story, a a Seattle team smashed the DA, or excuse me, MLS Academy. Smashed them like 8-2 and and had a better record. But you can't relegate the MLS Academy teams. They can't go second flight. So his, his Seattle team stayed down low. It's ridiculous. Uh, that's what happened. So DA crumbles. We're like, yay. And, and I said right from the, the beginning, it don't matter. Another acronym will come up. And MLS. And everyone's saying it. It's crazy. I was at the fields um, at Fear Farm a private location where we're allowed to be because of COVID. Uh, yeah, we were there. And I swear to you, two or three different parents were talking about the MLS Academy. They were invited or whatever, and they got all excited. I'm like, goofballs. And I'm like this, on the sideline, talking to people non So I will, I will, I mean, my wife, when I get like this, my wife just like can't be near me. I, I just, I'm always arguing with the sideline. My new role in life is, is it possible to educate the parents on sideline and not completely offend them where they want to stick a stick in your eye. I mean, kind of thing. I argue with them all day, all day. And I educate nonstop. I call the coaches out. I do, do all this stuff. It's, it has to be about the game. It has to be about the game. It has to be about the, the player's development within the game. And we got to remove the parents and we got to remove the, the coaches and educate them how to shut up. They need to. They ruin the game. There's no learning happening in the game except for their star forward and their goalkeeper that takes in shots. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Everything in between, nothing. Uh, yeah, we, ha- we have major problems. But I'm educating as many people as I can. Uh, everyone's like, MLS Academy. Oh, my gosh. It was MLS Academy. Oh my, they have a pathway. Y- you know what your pathway is? Be freaking good. This is what's going to happen. I've experienced it as a Division I professional athlete. My career came to an end because I couldn't handle the ball under pressure. So I, I teach that because I don't want anyone to fail like I did because I couldn't handle the ball under pressure. And for whatever reason, I was just the fast kid uh, with no technique. Why? It was, it was able to have. I could have had it. And I wasn't given that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, this is a, a big problem. So h- here's what's going on. We, we have all these new leagues and all this stuff. Whatever. Leagues are leagues. Pathways are pathways. I don't care. Um, we, we need to change the system. Have to break it up. It doesn't serve a purpose. And if we don't get moving right now, our, our women's national team is done they're going to be with the men, and we're going to have nothing, and we're going to be a complete laughing stock. We're so concerned about pay to play that we're, we're, we're not realizing we're punishing the, our children. I wish Megan Rapino, I can you please, I, I'll give you something. I, I know you're, 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 you love, or you get excited about dealing with, you know, equality and all that stuff. I get it. I get passionate about things. So I, you need something to do, right? You know, and, and this podcast, I'm, I'm an angry person on this podcast because I, I want, I know there's a change and we can do it, but we need people like uh, bigger than this nobody on this podcast to do something. So Megan Rapino, you have the biggest platform. You're the most powerful uh, lady in U.S. soccer. You are in charge. Fix the technique because Megan Rapino is technical. 
I mean, she she didn't look that te- technical in the last World Cup. She was just uh, unbelievable in penalty kicks, but obviously her age is showing. But I saw her play live at, um, when Jessica McDonald was playing with Seattle Rain, and, and I saw her play. Her f- footwork was ma- – and she's technical. She – needs to focus on that, focus on inner cities, focus on uh, reach out that way so we can keep growing our game because we're not, we're going to, we're going to fall so far behind. We'll never catch up. It, it just, it's getting ridiculous. We, we need change. So um, here, here's the change. This is what needs to happen. Our, 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 our educational system, our licensing needs to be destroyed it's misguided. Uh, we have probably the most educated coaches on planet Earth reside in the United States. How is that possible? Because they're educated to learn tactics nonstop. They can read the game. They can see the game. They can. I mean, we we have more professional level coaches teaching tactics in youth soccer. We have z- hardly, as far as education goes, zero development. With kids, zero, nothing's taught. I took my Y one, I took my or youth module one, youth module two. I took my E, my D, my C. I took goalkeeping one, two. Uh, I, I have a, a a degree in education. I I get what's going on. You know, I see it, and we're not we're, we we aren't. U.S. Soccer doesn't put anything together to actually teach and empower the kids. The licensing program empowers the coaches. They get off on it. They're like, oh, we do a proper warm-up, and that sells. You know, and, and, and when we do our, our, our sessions, it's perfectly planned out, and there's progression, and everyone gets that. But guess what? It doesn't work. And, and the things I'm hearing to fix it is more coaching education, more – no. It, more education of getting our coaches to shut the freak up. We've ruined these kids in games. We're so concerned about winning. We have no development. That is a fact. We're so scared we're going to get scored on. And I get it. I feel the same pains as you. But you better be concerned about your child and the number of touches on the ball. This is how we solve the problem. This is how we solve the problem. I need the believers out there. Start documenting what your child does in a game. Every game, it's so important. Everything, every time they dive in, every time they hustle, every time they um, receive the ball, how many touches on the ball, do they pass the ball forward, do they pass the ball backwards. And if you email me at Coach, uh, what is it, Coach or Coach Cameron Podcast at gmail.com, email me and I'll email you the stats I do on my son. And you just have to have knowledge. And then you can create, um, you can do math formulas and break it down and and really see what's going on. You can see what's going on. You totally could. All you have to do is get data. And then you'll notice we have too many kids that don't get opportunities in the ball in a game. And we have too many coaches and too many parents influencing from the sidelines. I was at practice yesterday and they did a scrimmage, and this one coach, oh, my gosh, just screaming. He was in the middle of everything, just yelling at his kids, it is, it is. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And, and he gets away with it because it's all Hispanic players. And this is what's killing this, uh, the Hispanic uh, players in America. It's their own freaking people. Jeez. They yell at these kids nonstop. Like crazy. Let me tell you something. What? It does nothing because these, these kids are so technical. They're freaks. And what, what happens? These coaches yell, scream, go nuts on them, and then they start leaving because they get bought by the white clubs, and they leave, and they move into a foreign environment that they can't really showcase who they are because they don't play the same as the Latino teams. And these coaches think they're super coaches because they're just nonstop, la, 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 la. And I constantly keep hearing the same freaking thing over. And I want to stop hearing it. That's just how the people are. That's what they're. No, no, it's not. I talk to my sideline. It's all Hispanic. And they, they don't disagree with me. It, it, it's just a fight 
needs to be had. So back to the screaming coach, it, he gets away with it because his kids are good. So, oh, it must be the coach. See, it's about the coach. It's, it doesn't matter that the fact that his kids are so technical, they can, they can problem solve on their own. But over time of this verbal abuse of stupidity, they're going to weaken their brains to, to play the game. And it's not fun. Who wants to play in that environment? Jeez Louise. Um, so it needs a change. So he, here's, here's my thoughts on it as far as how we can make change. What needs to happen is the style of play needs to change. Our style of play in, in U.S. soccer is system whether you're playing a 4 3 3 3 5 2 or whatever and, and making sure everyone understands the numbers, um, that is what we do. We, the system should be very simple. Here's the system. Every time the player gets the ball, they take a touch based on their age. So every time they have possession, meaning the ball's around them, they have to look up, and then they have to make a decision. A decision should always can, can you score? Can't score? Can you get someone can, that can score? If not, then you go back and around or whatever. That should go through their head nonstop. Some kids take longer. Some require two, three touches to identify a pass. But they have to be in that environment. They need to take a touch. They need to look up. And they need to play the ball according to decisions that they get to make, not from the flipping sideline over and over and over again, like learning anything you do at work, any, anything you do, like this podcast I'm doing. I'm, I do this five days a week, sometimes seven days a week, talking about the same things over, and I have all these bells and whistles all over the place, and it's it's difficult to use, but over time, I'm actually got pretty good at it, as far as YouTube. And by the way, today is a record day for me. I'm over 5,000 downloads today shattering my one-day record of 2,300. That's a big deal um, for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm not Joe Rogan, but for you soccer podcast, not bad. Anyways, um, so thank you for listening. And what you can do to help this podcast grow is please share it. Let people know about it. That's number one thing you can do to it, other than buy a shirt. Buy a shirt and support me. Um, and you can do that at coachcameron.com. But back to what we can do. We need to change the style of play where it's about the individual, not about the team. You can teach tactics. You can do all those things, coaches. Okay, you can do those things, but you got to shut up on the sideline, and you have to embrace the importance of controlling your sideline. That's why I got so mad when in Arizona, I don't know where if the rules were for everybody else, that we had coaches on one side uh, and parents on the other. That angered me because then I was screaming Across the field at my parents, I remember a referee to shut them up. I, I, I would not tolerate it. I will lose my mind. And everyone knows it. And they still break the rule. And I still stay with my standard of shut up. And I remember a referee was like, you need to control your parents. I'm like, I want to. Can they sit next to me? Because they, they'll shut up if they're next to me. It's hard to scream, you know, 60, 45 yards across the field or uh, 60, 70 yards, depending on the size of the field they give us that day. Um, yeah, you, a coach is a manager. You manage the parents and what they say. You educate the parents and let them know that they need to be training at home a ton. They, they need to work on their technique at home so you can work on your tactical stuff, the spacing and all that. That's important, too, because you want them to understand shape and they, you want them to be able to have time with the ball. So, yes, you need to create tactics that will allow the individual to have success. So shape matters. I mean, there's so many things you can do. Game, the, the second thing, you know, the style of play. Second thing is uh, managing uh, your sidelines and educating your parents. The third thing has to be the most important. And we talk about this. Everyone, this is, isn't foreign, but there's no follow through. Is the most important thing for these uh, these kids is the ability to play on Saturday, Sunday, or whenever it is, and make mistakes. Have to. And we we need to change the rules of the game. Seriously, we got to change the rule. U.S. If you want to do something major, U.S. Soccer, you know, yeah. Change the style of play. Give the the tactics for the individual to take a touch, look up, make their own decisions. 
It can also be uh, have possession. You, you can play one touch soccer. You have to build towards that depending on your ability. Uh, so it's not always take a touch. I get that. But have possession, look up, and make a decision over and over and over again so you can get it done. The last thing, the most important thing is U.S. soccer. This is what you can do. Change the freaking rules. Make it a point system that you get points for every every pass they make. Make it one point for every connected, or two points for every pass made in their back half. One point for every uh, pass made in the uh, attacking half. And then every pass they make in the attacking uh, third. Well, you can add another freaking line, make it three points for every pass made, or something like that. You, you change the rules. Change the scoring system. Because then you'll get the parents saying something different. I've done a points league. I understand the problem. I try and influence it all the time. And because I kept trying to change the game and all that on mass scale with you know the clubs I ran, leagues I ran, I forgot about my children. I'm going to stick with my children. I'm going to focus on Jack. All right? I'm going to focus on Jack, then Jet. Uh, I, I'm going to focus on uh, the ones playing in my house and be about my family. I'll use this podcast as a resor- resource to ho- hopefully educate people not to do the same thing we've been doing. And all you new parents going into the system, you know, you know, if your child's five or whatever, and you want, you're want excited about getting into soccer, stay away. Teach them to get technique. Stay away from it. They'll ruin them. Create your own league. Uh, I used to have a league in my backyard for my kids. Create a backyard soccer league. That would be better until like eight. They, they got to master that ball. It's so important. So uh, I, I'm going to get out of this crazy thing. So what are we doing? We're doing the same flipping thing over and over again. U.S. soccer is a problem. They're robbing the soccer culture all day long from everybody, especially the Hispanic community. We can make change. And I, anyone that's a believer in this, parent, coach, director, whatever, contact me at coachcameronpodcast at gmail.com. And let's create our own our own uh, group of people. And let's see if we can uh, get change in some capacity. I don't know. I'm going to try something. I got to be, I got to be more effective other than complain, which I'm good at. All right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.